Ken, Ken Salville here today, just uh, having a look at all our annuals. We are uh, just finished a, a big run, so this is our big haul for the beginning of our planter season. So uh, we get started each year by collecting all the uh, you know flats of each of the different types of annuals that we need to fill uh, planters for our clients. And so uh, yeah, we've uh, got quite the selection. So I'll just uh, show you around here a little bit. Alrighty, so uh, here you can see just a nice assortment of annuals. Uh, just miscellaneous uh, varieties. This is sort of our overflow area. We have automatic sprinklers here that run uh, twice each, uh, each day, once in the morning, once in the evening, and keeps these guys alive while we're waiting. So just a, a fairly good combination there. And then we'll just go for a quick walk through uh, some of our other plants that we have here. And then we'll be looking inside the greenhouse. So here we are inside the greenhouse and uh, all these plants are all pre-sold to different clients for different uh, installations. And so it's quite a bit of plant material. That's definitely a, a haul, you could say, a lot of plants. And it takes us about two weeks to accumulate all these things together for all the assorted different clients. And these guys have just been freshly watered, so we give them all a good soaking, usually twice a day. Make sure that they're okay. And so yeah, so here we can see assortment of different types of begonias. These are probably mostly the non-stop type begonias. And uh, there's one there, that one says Fragrant Falls. Peach color, so peach is always a nice color to work with. Then we have the fibrous begonias, which these guys are better for sun, whereas these are better for shade. Uh, here's a, one of these Garden Meister fuchsias, which is a beauty. It's great for, uh, for shaded areas. So they give you those nice bright orange flowers with the purplish foliage. Then we've got your standard geraniums. We've got quite a variety. We always have red geraniums. Some clients really like these uh, mixed with the white uh, plants like Bacopa, for example. It's pretty common. And then we have some dahlias. This is the Mystic Illusion Dahlia. So these are beautiful yellow color and they are great for planters or in ground, whichever works. And then some calla lilies here in the back. These are going in an area that's sort of partially shaded and they're quite fun. So you can combine these with the begonias that we have here and maybe some lobelia and uh, even some of these uh, beautiful variegated vines here. I'll talk about those in a minute. So Dracaenas, we have a lot of different types of Dracaenas. Uh, these are just some of the smaller sizes, but uh, the purple Dracaena, spiked Dracaena, as well as the uh, green variety. Um, there's some little carnations here. But uh, this is one of my favorite trailing vines. It's pretty common. They just call it uh, Creeping Charlie. But uh, Glaucoma is the name of it, Heteraceae. So this is one of those trailing vines that has a beautiful fragrance to it and it hangs straight down off the planters. So I really like that, that look, that's pretty cool. And then here beside it is the variegated Plectranthus. So this one they call it Swedish Ivy, but it's Plectranthus Astralis. This one is actually called Argentia Variegata. And what a beautiful foliage on that thing. And this thing will cascade down about three or four feet. So a pretty cool plant. Uh, some bacopa there, which we always use lots of bacopa. And agrostemas here in the background. So they're like marguerite daisies. They make a nice, a nice upright plant for your plantings, planters. Then we have the supertunias. We'll have sort of the blue colors and the uh, reds and a lot more than that, you'll see a lot of them here. So some more shade plants, the impatience plants. Lobelia, I mentioned that. Uh, Tritoma, I think is another one. That's more of a sun plant, but this one is Dichondra, which is one of my favorites. This is Dichondra here. Again, I love plants that hang straight down off the side of the planter. I just find it's quite dramatic. And it looks great, and these silvery ones are great in full sun. And then combined with some of these uh, the black Ipomoeas. So, you can see the label there. These are sweet potato vines. All kinds of sweet potato vines here. 
different uh, shades, sort of the wine colored ones, as well as some of the golden ones, which are here as well. Uh, so canna lilies, assorted cannas here on the floor. We've got the yellow dwarfs here, and we've got the standard purple leaf with red flowers and standard purple leaf with orange flowers, and then uh, green leaf with orange flowers. So cannas are always great for those center pieces in the middle of your planters. Uh, Penicetum satisum rubrum, which is the red fountain grass or purple fountain grass. Really cool plant. I like them just as individuals in the pots. I don't have to mix it up too much. Some other assorted uh, canna lilies, the Tropicana canna, which is really nice pink stripes. And another uh, red on green flower canna. Pink polka, polka dot plants, always nice for a little splash of color in your planters. Uh, nice uh, bright pink color without any flowers, really. They do flower, but nothing spectacular. Then we get into all of our coleus, a lot of coleus. Now coleus are great in sun. The new ones are particularly nice in sunny areas. They will also grow in shade, but these new ones are just dynamite in the sun. So they're awesome and uh, so many different colors. I really like to work with foliage colors rather than flower colors, just because uh, you know you, you don't always have to wait for the plant to be happy and bloom. You know They're always happy as long as they have leaves on them, they're good. Uh, Creeping Jenny, the golden money wart, is one of the best plants for planters, especially in part shade or shade. Just lovely. Again, it's a cascading plant that hangs straight down off the side of the planter. That's a good one. Uh, more petunias. Uh, we have our papyrus here. So this is the, the uh, King Tut papyrus. And this is a proven winner's variety there. And uh, these things get to be huge. They will get to be about seven feet high and just spectacular for large planters. Awesome around a swimming pool, that sort of thing. Very exotic look. Love those guys. Uh, Salvia, I'm not sure if this is Victoria. We'll just have a quick look here and see. Uh, Cathedral Deep deep Blue. Looks like a really good one. I love the Salvia, the blue Salvia. Really nice. Uh, gives you a little vertical look in the in your planting. And uh, here we have some more. We have light pink and a sort of a dark mauve colored uh, petunia there. Again, all super tunias are proven winners. Uh, these are the dragon's wing begonias, which are awesome for different types of planters. Again, these guys are better in partial shade. Um, not too sunny, but mostly shade. They're good, good for those conditions. Just gonna have a quick look in the back. Oh, here's some pink and blue. Bacopa. That's kind of fun. Some different colors. And here's another uh, Plectranthus here. This big silvery leafed one. It's all wet now. I've just been watering. But the uh, these guys are just awesome in planters just to give you like a beautiful foliage uh, plant. There's another creeping uh, or the uh, sweet potato vine. This is a golden leafed one. Just remember, you can do your planters without any blooms at all. Just do them all with foliage plants. There's so many fabulous uh, foliage plants. They just look great. So there's a lot a lot of different ones to choose from. And I really like that. I'd often have planters without any flowers, just with foliage. Um, now we're just going to have a look through here. There's a little bit of celosia in here. And some more geraniums, some pink geraniums. And then some lovely uh, white uh, petunias there, super tunias. Then we have again some more bacopa, more sort of a light mauvey pink petunia there that's quite nice and some little mini yellows. These are, are the uh, um, yeah super bells or calibracoas and this is a double double soft yellow. Uh, we had a couple other uh, calibracoas here as well. I think actually the ones we were just looking at outside I think that's where we have a bunch. Oh, and here we have the Cosmos, beautiful white Cosmos, which again, these are all requests from clients. So this is just a sneak peek at what's going on in the background. When it's uh, this time of year, we have to gather the plants from everywhere, get them all into one spot, and then we can divvy them up between each client, and then we go out and actually plant them in each client's, uh, at each client's property. And we try to get the biggest plants we can just so we're not starting with stuff that's too tiny. 
but when you're doing it in your own home you can start with smaller plants and you, you can take a little bit uh, let's say more direct care when you first plant these planters you can water them all in but you're going to need to have watering uh, literally every couple days or every day pretty much for the first 10 days so if you're living at home and you have your own planters you can just walk out the door and just go ahead and uh, plant those plants and uh, and then water them right up you know because you're there every day but for companies that only show up once a week or so it's difficult so what we do is we actually send a, send somebody by about every two days just to check on those plants make sure that they're still alive and they're not dying even though they have automated irrigation the automatic irrigation doesn't work for just newly planted plants so you have to do hand watering to make sure that they're taken care of so there we go that's the greenhouse and out here is the overflow as i was saying and there are some caliber coas out here as well as petunias these are white caliber coas these little guys right in here and some some other petunias some of the small flowered ones and some more ipomias which are the uh, sweet potato vines and our angel wings um, senecio i'm pretty sure that's what that one is that's a beautiful plant it's just gorgeous silvery leaves so it's a really good one so yeah it's a it's a lot of fun when planting season comes about and so we're always excited about uh, getting out there and getting these plants as soon as we can each year for our climate we like to get started about uh, the 15th of may normally this year everything's gone sideways because this, the season is so early uh, right now we would normally be experiencing frost and a lot of these plants that are outside here would have to be protected at night But it's so warm this year. We don't have to protect anything. It's just straight outside. The biggest thing we have to protect them from is uh, Is actually marmots. We have a lot of marmots around here and the marmots will eat everything So we have to have makeshift fencing and whatnot around our areas just to make sure that, you know, if there is any animals out there, we can keep them out. We just use a bit of deer fencing here and then we get them all uh, tied up each day, make sure it's nice and secure. And same with this greenhouse, we have to keep uh, screens across the bottom half of the doorways to make sure that those plants uh, are safe from the marmots because they will eat everything. Now, deer proof is one thing, but marmot proof is totally different and they'll eat just about anything. So I guess uh, that's it for today. Thanks so much for everybody for tuning in to Grower Coach. Uh, remember to leave a, a like and, a, and please subscribe if you haven't yet. And uh, watch for our, our videos. We're getting them out as quickly as we can. Uh, sometimes uh, three shorts a week and two longs a week. That's what they're saying nowadays, long videos and short videos. Anyway, thanks again for, for viewing and checking in and I hope you guys have a great season and have fun with your annuals. Good luck.